Hey everybody, Bill and Deb. Hi there. We tried to pick a picturesque spot for this. I think we did. Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> we live in the I jungle. I hope so, yeah. <laughs> well, for the, for the time being anyway. Yeah, it's beautiful here on this... Uh, private property. On this private property. Mm -hmm. Undisclosed private property. Mm -hmm. uh, in Florida. In Florida. Yeah. Yeah. And we've been invited back next year. Guess what? I'm sure we'll come. Yeah, we'll, I'm sure we'll be here next year. But uh, anyway, you know what? Um, the date came and gone, and we didn't even think about it until later. Nope, I thought about it before. Yeah. But then it was like, hmm, well, now what? <laughs> <laughs> we missed that anniversary. <laughs> <clears throat> so what is the date today? March the 16th. 16th? 16th? Today's the 16th. Oh, March. boy. I'm sure glad I've got you to keep me... Uh, well, don't count. I just know that because our friends just told me that just a little while ago. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's not because I'm it. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah, on March the 1st, 2022, by the way, in case someone's watching this a year or two down the line. Right. Yeah. On March the 1st, 2022, that marked a full three years of us full-timing. Yes. In uh, a cargo trailer conversion because we're on our second one now. That it's, yeah. 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 And we thought that we would share with you some of the things that we have learned in the last three years. Well, you know. it, it's pe things that people have um, asked us about, too. Oh, yeah. And so we thought, okay, we yeah. can talk about this stuff. So we'll t talk about <laughs> it here for a little bit. And uh, uh, then we'll also talk a little bit about, uh, you know, what the future holds. Okay. Sounds like a plan. Yeah. Yeah. So where do you want to start? Well, our very first night... <laughs> In the red trailer, <laughs> yeah. we moved out of the house, <laughs> went to the first campground, mm -hmm. March 1 of 2019, that very first night, it was like 50 during the day, Yeah, we hooked everything up and we had our dinner and we went to bed and we were so proud of ourselves. Yeah. Well, let me, let me, <laughs> let me bring this out, that uh, mm -hmm. this was the very, very first time we had ever set up a trailer. Other than on our driveway. Other than on our driveway, yeah. Yeah. But, you know, to actually, but, you know, this was the beginning. And this is the very first time we'd set up a trailer in in a full-time mode. Yes. Let's, let's put it that way. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And we slept great that night. Yeah. It was a little cool when we woke up the next morning. Yeah. And Bill went outside. And what did you find? Well, uh, a freak... Well, it was kind of predicted, but I didn't pay attention to AccuWeather back no, then we like busy. I do now. Yeah, we didn't <laughs> Plus, care. Plus, we didn't pay attention no, to the weather. No, <laughs> we didn't pay attention to anything back then. But uh, I got up the next morning. Uh, the temperature was like 9 degrees. The wind chill was minus 3. We'd had about an inch or two of uh, ice and snow. And uh, we did not have a... Uh, heated water hose from the no. water line to the trailer and we had left the hose hooked up and yeah 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 and, we did um, it, it froze froze <laughs> <laughs> so okay no fresh water at this point right right <laughs> and then of course uh, we had our uh, at that time in the first trailer we were using auxiliary gray tanks to catch our <clears throat> sink water and shower water that were mounted outside the trailer you know so we could just haul them up to the dump station. Right, because we thought that was the smart oh, thing Oh, yeah, to do. it was a smart thing to do. <laughs> <clears throat> but guess what? They were frozen as well. And yeah. so, uh, but we dealt with it. Uh, but the thing that uh, the thing that was the most frightening. Yes. Now, those other things were just because we were new and it was yeah, fun. And it was yeah, yeah. Like, oh, I mean, you know, we yeah. eventually dealt with it. <laughs> things thought out. We'll you know, figure this out. <laughs> we, bought, we bought a heated hose. You know, the next day, everything was fine as far as that goes. Right. But, um, the thing that uh, that was really shocking and frightening was I got to looking at the trailer. We didn't know anything about wheel chocks and, you know, ways to keep oh. it from rolling. We didn't yeah, think about that kind of stuff. That. No. We knew about level. <laughs> yeah, we knew about level side to side and forward, forward and aft. And, uh, but this, this spot that we had parked on, and it was the only spot available that we could find. This is back when uh, you still had first come, first serve spots. You right. Know. And this Which one, was surprising to us because we had not done any of this before. Right. We pulled into the campground. It was first come, first serve. Go get your spot. Use the honor box. Put your money in. Yeah. And it was like, 
Well, this is weird. We, we figured that, <laughs> but we figured there'd be plenty of spots. And when we got there, there was only one spot left available. Yes. And it was on an incline towards the back of the trailer, you know, like this. It was steep. So when I get up the next morning and I'm looking around, um, assessing the things that I need to do, I start looking closely and I notice where I had the tongue jack uh, jacked up on the front with a block, you know, there. I noticed that it appeared that it had moved two inches backwards. So we, in the night, we had rolled two inches backwards. And had we have continued to roll, we would have went right, right down on, into the, <laughs> right down into into the, the valley. <laughs> <laughs> Never knew. Um, that would have been the end of our experience. I don't think uh, I don't think Matt's off road recovery could have got us. I out. don't think anybody yeah. could have got us out. Yeah, for those of you that watch Matt's off road <laughs> so recovery. So, what was the next thing we did? Well, the very next thing we did uh, to uh, get something soon was we went straight to Home Depot and got some uh, cinder blocks, some concrete blocks and blocked up the, uh, you know, chalked the wheels at the back with that. Right. Is what we did there. And since then we've grown, of course, and we've got better wheel chocks now and X chocks and all And we all have all stuff. kinds of uh, leveling blocks because yeah. one never knows. In, in Florida, it's not an issue. Right. As far as, you know, a few little blocks and you're good. Uh, in some of the Ozarks, and of course, as we travel further, east and north and we get more into mountainous areas it can be a big deal oh, in yeah. Missouri it's a big deal oh, yeah. um, especially in the Ozark Mountains and places like that so we have how many sets six five we, we carry six sets of uh, those Camco leveling blocks and because some of the places we've been it's been like that it's been like that it's been like that been like that <laughs> So we want to make certain that we have plenty of leveling blocks to tackle most anything we come across. You know, one never knows. Yeah, you just never know. And like I say, like Deb was saying, when you travel into the Ozarks and stuff like that, and we are going to be, if things work out in our favor, we will be traveling up north and east uh, during the summer eventually. Uh, we know we're going to be in some hills and mountains, so we really don't know what we're going to discover up there yeah. until we get there uh, now and again you run across a campground where it's built on the side of a mountain or on the side of a hill but they've got all the spots terraced out real nice and neat and pretty and the spots are all nice and level you know we've been in a few of those. and we've been in some of those <laughs> yes but you never know what to expect and since we'll be going into a lot of these campgrounds blind we just want to make sure that we have enough leveling blocks to cover ourselves and that's just all there is to it and, and go ahead no i was just gonna say and as our travels increased and we went to other campgrounds mm -hmm. you know what not every campground we were going to had water at the site no, no. and um bill he says we'll just go get some of those little six gallon cans at walmart <laughs> and we'll fill them and we'll pour them and i got to thinking Okay, we into had, the into the fresh into water the tank, fresh right. water tank on the trailer, mm -hmm. and I got to thinking, okay, wait just a minute. We had a fifty-gallon water tank, and those little cans held six. How many trips are we going to have to make to fill up our tank? Well, and you can get larger containers too, but well, then yeah. they get cumbersome to handle. Yeah. Okay, here's so. my next thing. Mm -hmm. Six gallons. I was always taught that a gallon of water weighed close to 10 pounds. Bill tells me it's eight point. A little over eight. Point, blah, blah, right. blah. Right. So now 60 gallons, 60 pounds, I mean, I'm going to pick up 60 pounds. Well, no, I would do it. <sighs> but anyway, we, so, know what, we know what you're getting at. So yeah. I say to him, we have this van. Yeah. Why can't we figure out some kind of tank to put in the van that we can transport over fresh water into our mm -hmm. home and first what we experimented with we did that we went and got a i think it was like a 30 35 gallon tank of tractor supply one of those round drum styles and then we bought a uh, uh, 12 volt uh, uh, transfer pump at harbor freight it was under 50 dollars and it worked really really good and we used that for quite some time we go to where the nearest water supply was in the campground. Usually campgrounds, especially Corps of Engineer campgrounds, if they don't have water at the site, they will have a place where you can go get water sometimes near the dump station, or sometimes they will have them you know, spaced out throughout the campground. And these are not ones you can 
hook in, you and know, leave. to your and yeah. leave hooked on. <laughs> These are for you to fill your your fresh water tank. So then we did that, and then as time progressed, uh, and some of you might have seen that video uh, a couple years ago, where we actually installed a regular 42 gallon fresh water tank in the van built a cage around it and everything it's part of the van build itself and then we have a dedicated water pump that is uh, mounted uh, back towards the driver's side uh, corner at the very back and we just have a switch we just simply plug in the water hose after we fill the tank run a hose into the fresh water fill throw a switch and then we're transferring water from that tank over into the trailer so that's the way we handled that situation and and for the times that we've had to use it it's worked out really really well yes and of course a lot of these campgrounds we go to don't have sewer at the site no they have a centrally located dump, uh, station. dump station well you hope it's centrally located sometimes yeah, sometimes not. it's not but um, <laughs> sometimes uh, it's two three miles <laughs> so now what we're going to do uh, rather than using the auxiliary tanks that you know as we get older and i'm still a tough guy but you know it just kind of gets cumbersome especially if you're on a rocky campsite to try to pull uh, that tote that uh, gray water tote up to your 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 tow rig to hook it onto the hitch to haul it up because trying to pull it over the rocks and everything so now what we're going to be doing in the near future probably within within a month from now yes is installing a, an auxiliary large gray tank in the van and then have a setup where we pump it off of the gray tank in the trailer into the van. So then we go and dump our gray water and turn around and fill the fresh water tank and come back and refill. With two different hoses. <laughs> Please. Two different hoses. So now let's move on to other things that we had learned. You know, a lot of sites, a lot of sites uh, that do have water at the site, there'll be a lot of them where the water outlet is fairly close to yes, your right rig. There. You know, be right there. 25 so, feet yeah uh, easy yeah. easy in fact you call up some of it but we've stayed at a few sites where it was a lot further away and yeah kind of put it more in a central location between right. the two campsites right. <laughs> so consequently because of that we now carry 75 feet of hose yes and uh so far 75 feet has been sufficient yes for the different places and, and that we go. what we do is we have an actual tote with a lid and everything mm -hmm. that has all of our fresh water stuff in right. it. Right. And we have another tote that has all of our gray water stuff in it. <laughs> right. So we always know to grab the fresh water, pull out as much hose as we need, whether it's the 25 or the 50 or the 75, or we're going up to fill at some other location. Yeah. Right. Right. So. Yeah. So we make sure of that. And then, of course, the next thing power cords, power cords, power cables yes yeah uh, a lot of people but we park attended for a while we were park attendants for a while so we kind of heard uh, some of this a really. lot of our followers <laughs> a lot of our followers know this and when we were park attending we would have people come back after they tried to sit up on their site and they would say um, our power cable doesn't reach uh, the 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 power pole so we'd like to move to a different site um, well, the thing about it is when you're going into some of these campgrounds and, and now last year when we park attended for a while, if someone came up and asked us to move to a different site because their 25 foot power cord wouldn't reach, we would have to tell them, sorry, there's no place for you to go because the campground was completely full. There was no place else to put them, you know, and whether that happens this coming season or not, we do not know, but uh those are things you have to be prepared for so we uh, carry how many feet of we electric? right now we're carrying a total of 75 feet <laughs> of electric yeah oh no i'm sorry i was thinking the 50 no 50 we're carrying okay, 50 right now so you gotta watch yeah, them yeah and we are carrying <laughs> on well, our trailer is wired for a for 50 amp service so we are carrying um, an appropriate uh, array of different dog legs uh, because adapters. Because sometimes only 30 amp is available, right. so we have to dog bone down right. so that we can still plug our trailer in. Yeah. And um, so we have another tote with all of our electric right. stuff in it because yeah. <laughs> one never knows. <laughs> so yeah, we carry that. And then uh, also we've collected a few more uh, adapters we stayed at one campground where 
at our particular site, you know, a lot of them will have some, uh, a 30 and then a 20 amp. Some of them will have a 50, 30, and a 20. Well, we stayed at one particular campground where they had two 30s on our mm -hmm. power pole. Mm -hmm. Two 30s, and that was it. And, of course, ours is wired for 50 amp service, which is two hot legs when you're getting a full 50 amps, two hot legs of 50 amps each. So there's a dog, there's a dog uh, leg adapter out there. It's a Y where it has two male 30s that go into one female 50. So you're pulling a 30 amp leg off of this one plug, you're pulling another 30 amp leg off of the other plug. And we utilized that. Uh, we got one in and had it ordered in and used it and it worked fantastic. Granted, we didn't have a full 50 amps for each side of the panel, but we had 30 Wait, amps available we could hook up. <laughs> for each side of the panel. Well, we could. We also could hook up with our 30 to 50. Okay, and then I also have adapter. one that is a in case it's just an electric outlet at somebody's driveway. I can plug in a 20 amp that yeah. converts it over, you know, so I can plug my 50 amp cord, right. which plugs into my trailer. And then, of course, we've got to be extra, extra careful. <laughs> oh my gosh, yes. <laughs> the way we utilize the the limited amount of power that's available to us. Yes. When it comes to that. Yes. So, but so we've learned to carry a wide variety, and some of these adapters we may only use once in a year, and others we'll use often. But the the idea is to have them with us just in case. Just in case. Just in case. You just never know. So, as far as that, so carry extra power cables with you if you're going to be going into a campground blind and you've never been there before you know that's one of the things that we highly recommend you be prepared for that's just one have, of those things yeah. that y'all have heard the, what happens when we're parking isn't what's it real life or something yeah like that. yeah something like that <laughs> but um, whatever and, you know as far as the water hose is concerned we'd have we actually had people come up to us and say that their water hose doesn't reach mm -hmm. um and they wanted to move to a different side because their water hose doesn't reach. They mm -hmm. only carry one length of 25-foot hose. Well, you can go to Walmart and you can buy uh, a 25-foot length of that cheap Camco uh, RV water hose for like 12 to $15. Uh, I hate that stuff. You can't it roll works. it up. But in, in a pinch, you know, <laughs> you can go do that. And now you've got 50 feet rather than just 25. So... Uh, and these are things that have really happened, and yeah. these are things that, you know, we either have known someone that's had this happen or it happened to us. Yeah. <laughs> okay, another question. Uh -huh. Of course, everyone knows we have our gazelle, and they know we love our gazelle. At first, we had a, uh, what they call a six-sided gazelle, and mm -hmm. now we have a five, and people yeah. have asked why we did that. Right. The original uh, gazelle was, the what, like Deb said, it's called the G6, and it's almost 12 feet in diameter, and I'm hoping we don't get rain. I hear it sprinkle now and then. <laughs> but um, it's 12 feet in diameter on the inside, and it's awesome. Oh, yes. Absolutely awesome. Oh, you know, yes. that one was awesome. But what we found, especially in some of the places that we travel to, um, there wasn't enough room to put it up. You know, some of these campgrounds we go to, like in Mississippi, the we, we went at one in Mississippi, you couldn't put even the smaller one no. up because there was no place, no, no place level to spot it. to do it. On the campsite, it's so where we backed in our trailer, uh, where on the pad, it actually sloped off like this. There was a picnic table for that site, but it was way over there, and you had to walk down this steep slope and and walk quite a ways over to where so your our particular chairs up picnic right in front of the trailer. <laughs> yeah. That's what we did there. Yeah, cause, um, no. So, you know, even uh, so at that spot, uh, we couldn't have realistically used even the smaller gazelle, no. the one that's eight feet in diameter. No. But we did gift the big one to a to a friend of ours. And we uh, we went ahead and got the smaller uh, gazelle gazebo, which is similar to a clam. Some of you that had a clam have a clam and they make they make similar sizes in both both manufacturers. And although we still can't use it all the time, we can use it a lot more than we ever could with the big one. So that's why we went down to the smaller uh, gazebo, which is eight, eight feet in diameter on the inside, roughly, give or take a few yeah, inches. Well, it's a few. An eight-foot yeah. round rug fits it perfectly. Yeah, yeah. Okay, So another question. Mm -hmm. We didn't have an awning on the red trailer. Nope. And we didn't put an awning on this trailer. And so the question has been, why not? And here again, it falls right back to the same thing. Some of the places we go, we couldn't have used an awning 
there was so many trees. We like trees. Yes, we you do know, like trees. A lot of the places we travel to, there's so many trees that we really couldn't use an awning. We wouldn't have had enough room to roll it out, you know. And so, and then, you know, it would have been nice to have one for the times that we could use it. Yes. But when we were having this trailer spec built to, to do a conversion on, we just simply couldn't afford the money, and I think at the time it was like twelve hundred dollars. I believe that yeah. was the price that quoted us. And we us. couldn't, uh, we couldn't afford it. Plus, we find you know. that a hundred and fifty dollar pop up <laughs> works just great with right. us. For us, um, we still have to baby it, just like you would an awning. If the wind's coming yeah. up, we go out, we lower it, we take the top off, make sure it's cinched down. Yeah. If yeah. it's raining heavy, we know we have to go out and get the water off, just like you do with an awning. But we can put the pop up anywhere we want it right right. anyway it will fit the place it'll work the best you know (laughs) sometimes it'll work great over a picnic table sometimes we have to set it up in a different spot so uh you know and then those times when we're fortunate enough to be able to use both the pop-up and the gazelle gazebo we've got the best of both worlds we got decent shade when we need it with the pop-up and then if we want to get away from the no and bugs, we go into the gazelle gazebo. Or a rainy, drizzly day. Yeah, or rain, yeah the, exactly. Or cold, we so, can use our fire so pit. <laughs> that's, one, that's one of the reasons why we don't have awning. Is the one, one reason is we couldn't use it all the time. And the next reason is we just couldn't afford to get one. Right. You so, know, that's all there is to it. So. Okay. Now, what do you use to find your locations? You mean our campsites? No. Google Maps versus Garmin. Oh. <laughs> we some... used to always use Google Maps on our phone. Uh, that's a good story. Um, we Yeah, like Deb said, we used to always use Google Maps on our phone. And then I find out now that, you know, I've, since then I know that there's other apps you can download which work very similar to the Garmin that we ended up getting. But uh, I, what, what I ended up getting, I got a uh, RV-specific uh, Garmin. And, of course, you go in and you, you add the length and the width and the height and your weight and things like that. Well, I embellished all those numbers to make it look even bigger, uh, you know, to make sure that it didn't take me down a trail, which is what uh, uh, Google Maps did Google Maps on did that occasion. on more than one occasion. One yeah. time it did it to us. After we'd had a horrendous day of breaking down, yeah, some rain. of them remember that video. Yes, and yeah. then we Google Maps took us down a trail, a dirt trail, in the pouring down rain in the dark. Yeah, <laughs> and then another time it took us down. We, it took us. It's a shortcut road, and mm-hmm. it took us down this narrow road that was so narrow. It was paved. But it, the road was so narrow that any time I met another vehicle, I had to stop and pull over best I could so the other vehicle could pass. And there was just barely enough clearance. And it saved for us the, how many miles? Uh, about two. Because <laughs> yeah. then we pull out and we're back on the road. We were all, right. It's like, okay, that's it. <laughs> but I ended up with this uh, uh, RV-specific Garmin. Uh, and I like it because it's got a nice big screen like this. Uh, also, what I also like about it is I don't even look at the spinometer on the van now. I, it, the, the speed comes comes up in the lower left-hand corner of the Garmin, and it's large enough that I can readily see it real easily, so I know how fast I'm going. Um, in addition to that, although I haven't used that feature yet, it also has a built-in dash cam, and, but I need to go ahead and get an SD card to put in that, and I can start utilizing the dash cam. But where I like to mount it, some people mount it you know, right in the middle, and... It's pretty good size. It's got like a seven-inch screen on it. But if I mounted it right in the middle, like directly below the uh, the rear view mirror, there are times when it would probably block my my vision just right when I'm looking over that way in order to make a left-hand turn, and and I'm a little concerned about that. So I mount mine down in the lower left-hand corner of the windshield, so I can just glance right over there and see it. I can always see it out of the corner of my eye. Whereas if I had it up here in the middle. I'd have to literally turn my head to look at it. And when you're towing the trailer down the road and dealing with all the crazy people on the highway, uh, you don't want to take your eyes off of the road. Uh, that's just all there is to it. Okay. So anyway, and then but, I had, but I like it. I had a lady approach me uh, at one of our campsites, mm-hmm. and they were new to this lifestyle. And she says, 
One of the things that's driving me crazy is what do you do all day? <laughs> How do you keep from going crazy? And I, I, I have never felt that way, but I did try to answer her as honestly as I could. Um, I have my art. I read books. Bill has his music. Yeah. He researches stuff on Google, mm -hmm. on, on, you know, yeah. out there in group web line. Right, right. Um, of course, we have our YouTube channel that t takes up some time. Mm -hmm. um, on yucky days, we sometimes just get in the van and go for a drive, go buy groceries, go to just look and see what's around us. Or we watch a movie. Or we go in and watch a movie. Yeah. Yeah. And that brings me to right. how do we how do we watch how do we our watch favorite movies programs when right. we have no service? Right. <laughs> well, I have an app on my phone that helps me. We have T-Mobile, and uh, we've been in some campgrounds where T-Mobile works great, and those that have Verizon have hardly no service. And we've been in campgrounds where exactly the opposite is is true. Right. However, I have an app on my phone, you know, that shows my signal strength. And it also, I have another app that helps me locate where the towers are uh, that service our, that are part of T-Mobile. So what we start looking for, especially when we're traveling and getting closer to the campsite, we start checking uh, those kind of things. Deb checks on that to see what kind of signal we got. It gives us an idea of what to expect when we get there. Of course, sometimes when we get there, we have no signal at all. Plus, we are under strict orders that we have to touch base right. with one of our children, at least right. one, every single day. Because, you know, their parents are old. So <laughs> so anyway, we have learned how to, uh, you know, search out and see where the signal is. And what we found when you're going down the road, too, uh, especially if you're going down an interstate, there will be a lot of towers along the interstate. And T-Mobile, you know, T-Mobile's network is growing constantly. I, I really believe that they're giving Verizon a run for their money. However, out west, it's still Verizon is the winner out west. And I understand and we know up that. north as yeah, well. Yeah. So, we may so we know that. So we may run into issues when we go up north, and we'll just mm -hmm. have to wait and see. Yes. But um, what, uh, what we do for television, uh, right now, we're only using one, one service, and I think it's Hulu. Right, it happens to have the yeah. Programs. That's all I'm using at the moment. Yeah, but and there's YouTube. Well, yeah, Hulu and YouTube. Now, there's two kinds of uh, Hulu you can get. You can get the standard one, which is like five, six bucks a month, you know. And on that one, you have to stream. But you can opt for Hulu Premium. Is that what it's called? I right. believe so. It's like thirteen, fourteen dollars a month, it's like something like that. Fourteen ninety nine with tax. Yeah, or Hulu. It's it's you when you go into Hulu, you can see the yeah. offer there. But what that allows you to do, it allows you to download um, a Shows. large percentage of their programs available uh, so you can watch them offline. So one of Deb's jobs when we're going down the road, we use her phone to, uh, to watch our favorite programs off of Hulu. And while we're going down the road traveling from one spot to the next, she is busy downloading uh, our favorite programs from Hulu, and sometimes I see Amazon Prime offers the same thing. Yeah. And we've used Amazon Prime from time to time, and, and we'll do the same thing with we'll them. jump back and forth. Yeah. But uh, then we have quite a bit of programming to watch of our favorite shows. What I do, I, we also have YouTube Premium, which is like 10 bucks a month. Now, on YouTube Premium... Uh, you don't have to watch any commercials whatsoever when you're streaming. And some of you that get tired of the commercials, and I don't blame you for that, but some of the you that don't like to watch the commercials, uh, you can opt for YouTube Premium, which is $10 a month. But there's more benefits that you get other than uh, no commercials. Uh, you can also download any uh, YouTube video and watch it offline later. And uh, you can also, it also gives you YouTube music. Uh, that's part of the package. And I actually like YouTube music better than uh, Pandora myself. Uh, it's just that I've learned how to use YouTube music. The neat thing about YouTube music is you can also, for that same 10 bucks a month, now remember, you're able to download YouTube videos and watch offline, no commercials. But also for that same $10 a month, you can download all the YouTube music you want. 
and right now I've probably got 300 to 500 songs downloaded so if we're in an area where we don't really have much service and we like to listen to music as we're getting around in the morning uh, I just pull up my downloads that I have and and push random you know or shuffle as they call it and we've got plenty of music to listen to the kind of music that we like uh, for ten dollars a month so that's how we do it and then we know once we get to a campground we we figure out if we don't have service at the campground we start figuring out where we need to go where the service is good sometimes it's just like five miles up away sometimes it's just a mile up to the top of the hill sometimes it's 10 15 you know so when we do have to make that 10 15 mile run we make the best of it and usually when you're finding good service like that that's also where the grocery stores are right you know it's also stores, a, gasoline yeah. So we we go ahead and take care of everything. We catch up on all of our emails. We download the programs we want to watch. We touch check, base with the touch children. Touch base with the kids. <laughs> so we take time to do all that. So we try to make this run count, you know, right. as much as possible. And so then, uh, but the neat thing about Hulu and Amazon Prime, they will allow you to download and have on hand up to 25 different programs. Right. You know, and if we watch... Uh, you know, we we usually watch a couple of programs at night. Uh, that'll last us quite a while if she's got 25 of our favorite shows, 25 uh, right. episodes of our favorite shows. So right. uh, that's how we do that. Yes. Anything else? Medical. Make... How do you tend to medical when you're on the road like we are? Um, here again, we have most of our prescriptions through Walmart Pharmacy because there's usually a Walmart somewhere mm -hmm. close to where we are and we can get our prescriptions refilled no matter what state we're in. Right. Um, so we do that. Um, we try to make a circle back to our doctors every 90 to 120 days because Bill has a few minor health issues. I've had a few minor health issues. So we just coordinate all of that. Mm-hmm. And we try to stay really, really healthy in between. <laughs> <laughs> but I will say this at the rendezvous, uh, I did not eat healthy at the rendezvous at no, all. No, and it, no. I paid for it for quite some time, but I'll tell you what, because <laughs> uh, we, uh, there was a lot of good food at the rendezvous. And, every, oh, here, Bill, eat, have these biscuits. Here, Bill, have these cookies. Here, Bill, uh, I baked a cake just for you. Uh, so. Uh, and, and yes, we are suckers for those <laughs> things. It's not just Bill. <laughs> All right. I did worse than you, though. I, and I admit that. Making reservations versus dropping in. <laughs> well, the thing about it is, especially with Corps of Engineer uh, campgrounds, 95% uh, of them, anything federal, it's simply a fact of life. That's what you got to do. Well, you got to make we reservations. Prefer it. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, you got to go online and do it online. But the. We we try to plan our trips ahead and go ahead and have our reservations in place. We are not brave enough to just take off. Not yet. That's just us. That now, as, as time goes on, especially now that we have solar on our rig and we're learning more about how to utilize that, we may our, our tune might change right. when it comes to that. But uh, as it is right now, we try to plan, you know, at least a month in advance where we're going. You know, and go ahead and have those reservations in place. Because the last thing that we want to happen is to get to where we are going, especially in an area that we're not familiar with. And, and all of a sudden, and surprise, there's nothing available, <laughs> you know, when we get there. So That would um, kind of ruin my day. Yeah. So the, so we do. We, we go ahead and make our reservations in advance. And like I say, we cater mostly to uh, Corps of Engineer campgrounds, federal campgrounds, federal parks, things like that. Anything that's federal. And of course, we've talked about this so many times before. We do have the what they call the Senior Pass, the America the Beautiful Senior Pass, which gives us a 50% discount. So on the average, we pay roughly about 12 bucks a night for a site. And they will always have electricity for that price, as, as so far anyway. So far. So far. And, uh, you know, a lot of them will have water at the site. If not, you know, there's water available. And they have a dump station. So, so our, we do that. Our next thing is state parks. Mm -hmm. State parks don't always honor 
or give a senior discount. But but we just recently found out, and that's the next place we're going. Yeah. We just learned that the state of Louisiana. You have to actually pronounce parks, it Louisiana. Whatever. If if you're if you're for, yeah. You, the, I'm not from there. I'm na- from a, Arkansas. A, na- a, a native. <laughs> A native anyway, of, of losing. Okay, but I'm just telling you. I just want, um, for those that want to come in and correct us, we would just thought we'd point that in. The okay, state continue. of Louisiana at their state parks honor the senior card that you get for the core parks. Yes, they honor the America the Beautiful Senior Pass, so you get a 50% discount at a Louisiana. 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 And I'm researching. I haven't found it all out yet, but I'm researching what other states might honor them as well. Mm -hmm. I've heard that there's others. So, But that opened up a whole new deal for us because we, in the past, we've always avoided Louisiana because they basically only have like maybe two or three Corps of Engineer campgrounds in the whole state. And I may have quoted too many when I said two or three. Yes. Very Uh, few. Yeah. Very few. So, but that has changed everything now. Yes. And I told the girl that. I said, you just made my day. Yeah. (laughs) She was real nice when you talked to her on the phone too. Absolutely. So we made that reservation there and uh, we'll, we'll follow up on that and let you know what we, we'll do a campground review when we get there and stuff. So. Okay. One of the things that we originally planned was because at Corps of Engineer Campgrounds, National Parks, those types of things, you can usually stay two weeks. And that was our original intent to stay two weeks everywhere we went. Yep. And then as we traveled, we discovered two weeks in some areas was too much. Too long. So then we decided let's do one week. Yeah. And that worked out great. But then we thought one week sometimes is too much. <laughs> but with the present situation with gas prices, we may go back to right. the two weeks. Yeah, when we started out, uh, when we started out before, yeah, uh, two weeks was awesome at first. But yeah, just like Deb said, yeah, you know, we got bored. Let's let's see yeah. what else is over We've the seen horizon. Everything we cared right. to see here. Yeah, <laughs> and it all depends on where you're at too. So, uh, so let's talk about what everybody's talking about Mm -hmm. and first thing i want to say before we get into this subject is this channel is not any kind of a political forum so refrain from political comments about current gas prices no matter which side of the fence you're coming from Please refrain from that because there are plenty of other YouTube channels. If you want to go voice your opinions about those things, go over there. But this channel is not in any way, shape, or form utilized as any kind of a political forum. Gas prices just simply affect our travel plans. Yeah, yeah. To the point that we may go back to every two weeks. Right. We'll just have to, you know, we'll we will have to just see how things go and then and then adapt accordingly. Right. You know, that, this is that's all just about all there is to it. Overcoming and, and, and adapting and <laughs> what is it? You, you, <laughs> seven of nine say. <laughs> yeah, what, yeah. You simply adapt. That's what seven of just, nine just says for, for you Star Trek uh, <laughs> Voyager fans. We we will have to adapt. So mm-hmm. we may go back to the two week thing. You know, uh, staying two weeks before we move on, and we may cut our distance shorter between. We're not sure. Each run, yeah. we don't know yet. We're mm-hmm. gonna we're gonna take that one day at a time and see how things go. We have been down this road before. We remember back in 07 when gas prices prices back then, uh, you know, were approaching the upper threes in our particular area per gallon. Now, when you, I read an article the other day, when you factor in inflation, that would have been equal to uh, $5 and 14 cents a gallon today. Which, you, it, which that know. is not the price we are at. At this point in time, where we are located. Right. Now I know of other yeah. places it is. Oh yeah, it, it's it, it all depends on where you are and what part of the country. And we may uh, that would might determine where we travel to. <laughs> it might. You know, uh, <laughs> if certain parts of the country, and that's how we utilize a gas buddy. If certain parts of the country are a whole lot higher than we feel like we can afford to pay, and of course I'll, I know what kind of mileage my vehicle gets when I'm towing the trailer. Uh, you know, I can put a pencil to it. And I can kind of figure, you know, about how much we'd be investing in fuel. We will probably... Because, honey, we're on a fixed income. (laughs) Yeah, we're on a fixed income, (laughs) Shiny. (laughs) But, uh, so, we will adapt. But like I say, we've been down these roads before. We've been down the... The the fluctuating uh, fuel prices, this is not the first time something like this has happened. 
you okay, know. our latest thing that we're learning, we have not learned at all, we've just learned, we just barely touched it, is our solar. Yeah. And we've just did our first boondocking for mm -hmm. a few days. Mm -hmm. Of course, it was cloudy, rainy, if, as you know, if you've watched our videos. So, are we done with solar? No. No. Not, a, not at all. No. Here not again, we're going to adapt. We're going to figure this out. Mm hmm where it will work for us absolutely you know we'll make so. it work it's uh, you know we've already talked about that you know yeah. what's in the future and i've got a couple other things i'm going to try to which we'll talk about it at a later date okay that. you said future plans are we did we already discuss future that, plans? that's really what future plans were <laughs> you know we're 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 planning on traveling and and depending on how we travel and how far we go each time we travel we have an idea where we want to go during the summer but uh, it, it will depend on, you know, how far we can afford to go at any given time before we can move on. You know, that's all there is and to we it. Just, at this point, we just want to it remind is. everybody that we do have our merch. Oh, yeah. Our shirts, hats, cups. Go to our website at iridetinyhouseadventures.com. Mm -hmm. And you'll find our store as well as our artwork. And if Bill ever gets on the bandwagon, you'll have his music there, too. But he isn't there yet. Nope. nope. Anyway. Anything else? I don't know. I think that pretty well covered it. We appreciate the people that have the new people, and we appreciate the oh, people yeah. that have been with us from almost day one or from day one. It has been a journey, and we're not done. <laughs> no. We are not done. Not by a long shot. No. Not by a we long shot. Don't regret shot. one moment moving out of our house. No. No. Don't. It's, we've never had any regrets at all. I mean, I, I wish the birds were really singing a lot a while ago, and they're not now. I wish, I, I hope there was some of the bird singing where it was in this video. I really hope so. But we are just uh, having a wonderful time. Everywhere we That's go, it's a new adventure. To it. Yeah. I didn't like the rainy days. Well, I wish you could have changed all that. My magic wand. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have one. <laughs> we're going to go now. This is Bill and Deb with I Ride Tiny House Adventures, and you know what we're going to say? We're not camping. We're living... Get out there. Do some living. We want to see you on the road. Bye-bye now. Bye.